Hi friends, this is Pallavi. I work as a software consultant at Noldus Inc. In today's session, I am going to talk about introduction to Scala type system. The agenda for today's session is going to be type inference, how, why and what about type inference, global type inference versus local type inference and finally Scala type system and subtyping. As programmers, we often come across a concept called type inference. To begin with, let me clarify that the type inference is not something unique to Scala. There are many other languages like Haskell, Rust, and C Sharp that have this language feature. By the definition, type inference refers to the automatic detection of data types of an expression in a programming language. Let us see this using a code example. Let me type a variable, say name, and assign it a value. If you observe, the compiler is able to automatically detect the type of the name, that is string, using the value that has been assigned to it. Let us understand with one more example. Here again, the compiler is able to infer the type of the uh, integer by the value that has been provided to it. Let us try to declare a list. See, the compiler again here is able to determine that it is a list of int from the values that has been assigned to it. This is what means by this is what means by type inference. The next question to follow is why do we have type inference? The sole purpose of having type inference is to help the programmer avoid verbose typing but still maintain the compile time safety of a statically typed language. Following it is another question that what is a type system? The type system is a language component that is responsible for type checking. Scala is a statically typed language, so there are always defined set of types and anything that doesn't fall inside that set is classified as an invalid type and an error, appropriate error is thrown at the compiled type. After what and why, the final question is how it fits and how does it make a difference. The type system exists to ensure type safety. The ability to infer types automatically makes any programming task easier, leaving the programmer free to omit the type annotations while still uh, permitting type, type checking and type safety. The final question before we dive into the Scala type system details is can we classify the language on the basis of their type systems? The answer is a yes. But this simple yes will make you feel dizzy because there are a number of classification types which, which, is, which is too broad to discuss in this tutorial. Glo global type inference. In the global type inference, often an algorithm called the Hindley Miller is used to deduce the types. The Hindley-Miller algorithm is also called as global type inference. In this algorithm, it reads the source code as a whole and deduces the type. Local type inference. Scala, Scala's type system works in a little different manner than the global type inference. Scala deduces the types using local type inference. Scala follows a combination of subtyping and a local type and local type inference. Let me elaborate up this with an example. Let us define a function factorial which takes an integer. Let me define if a 
is less than 1, we return 1. Else, we want to return factorial of a minus 1. If we try to compile this code, this correct looking code gives us an error which says recursive method factorial needs result type. The correct looking code snippet does not work because the compiler is not able to deduce the type of the recursive function factorial. The question arises, how do we fix it? We fix the above snippet by providing the return type explicitly. Now if we see the compiler is able to compile the above snippet correctly. In Scala, we have to in Scala, we have to annotate the types wherever local type inference does not help. In order for the previous snippet to work in Scala, we had to explicitly specify the return type. The question that comes is, why did Scala uh, choose to use local type inference over the global type inference? The simple answer to that is, for languages that are multi-paradigm like Scala, it is really hard to do a global or Hindler-Miller style algorithm of type inference since it restricts the implementation of OOPs features like inheritance and method overloading. Languages like Haskell still, uh, uh, still do global type inference, but Scala has decided to take a different trade-off. Let us discuss, now let us discuss Scala type system and subtyping. A type system is made up of predefined components or types and this forms the foundation or of how they are inferred. If we start digging further in the Scala source code, we would find that it is that it all points to any class. It is worth noting that the types are not regular classes, although they seem to be. Subtyping is not supported by the Hindley Mirror algorithm, but it is an essential feature in the multi-paradigm world. It is also, another reason why Scala does not use the Hindley Miller algorithm. Let us try to understand subtyping with help of an example of uh, suppose, say, we are trying to construct a heterogeneous list. The subtyping here converts the lower type into higher type wherever it is necessary. A simple example would be of uh, converting an int to a double. If it cannot fit, it goes to the top level, that is any type. All the, all the conversions can be translated into the type system hierarchy. Let us understand this with an example. Let me define a list. Now, let me input some values here. If you observe, we have got a list and the, and the list also of type integers. But what happens if I try to add some value which is of type double? You see, the list here is converted to a list of double from a list of int. Let us, cons uh, let us uh, see another example where I try to construct another list which has one value which is of type integer followed by a value which is of type double and maybe a string value. If you observe the compiler infers the list to be of type list of any. It does so in order to allow this list to be heterogeneous and uh, provide containership for an integer double and a string. After having the understanding of the Scala type system and subtyping, let us understand uh, when to use them and most importantly when not to use them. It is good to use them when it saves the programmer time and also where type informa information does not really matter. Situations could be 
when we are inside function or loops where the information about types is obvious but definitely one should avoid using them when type information is important that is it should never leave the programmer who is reading the code guessing about what the types i hope you liked our video for more details on this you can refer to my blog on the knowledge blogs the references for this tutorial have come from the following sources programming in scala programming guide by martin odis scala for the impatient scala in depth and scala for group thanks for watching us to read more of our blogs visit our website and our blogs at at knowledge.com thank you